Hello, I'm Bob Costas from Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky. On this first Saturday in May, it's the dateline for the most famous two minutes in American sports. Two minutes of racing over a mile and a quarter in a setting as historic and evocative as golf in Augusta, baseball in the Bronx, football in South Bend. Two minutes that the great novelist John Steinbeck, in attendance here some 40 years ago, called an emotion, a turbulence, an explosion. One of the most beautiful and satisfying things I have ever experienced. Two minutes that will be viewed again today by some 150,000 here at Churchill Downs and millions more around the world. Welcome to the Kentucky Derby. And they're off in the Kentucky Derby. An American Pharaoh got away very well from that outside post. Dortmund did too. Toward the inside, there's Carpe Diem up close. Danzig Moon showing speed to firing line on the outside. The Derby, as well as the events inspired by the Derby, are largely responsible for the continuous growth and expansion of both the city of Louisville and Churchill Downs as a corporation. Downtown Louisville, seen here on an average night is the home of the Kentucky Derby. The Derby technically lasts only one day, but to the city of Louisville, it's a month-long economic boom with festivities every other day. One of these festivities is Thunder Over Louisville. It is one of the largest annual firework festivals in North America. Around 700,000 people attend year in and year out. It brings in over $56 million to the economy and takes place two weeks before the Derby every single year. Kentucky Derby Festival President Mike Berry said, for every dollar spent by the festival in introducing the events, $22 is generated for the community. Members of the University of Louisville's MBA program completed an economic impact study. Researchers found the estimated economic impact at Kentucky Derby Festival is $127.9 million. The Kentucky Derby Festival and Churchill Downs work hand in hand to promote each and every one of these events. However, all of this work is just a build up to the ultimate main event, the Kentucky Derby. These downtown streets are riddled with tourists from all over the world during early May. Streets become shut down, overflowing with people. These people spend hundreds of dollars on housing, at the bars, and the restaurants, and most of all, inside Churchill Downs. Firing line on the outside is racing in second, and American Pharaoh's on the outside in third. Carpe Diem is running in fourth. Bolo comes on to be fifth. Danzig Moon pulled back in behind horses, running in sixth. Then it's Mr. Z from seventh. Ocho, 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 eighth and on the inside. Ten senders running in ninth. Upstart three wide in tenth. Moop to Hidge settles in toward the rail from eleventh. It's a knockout is running in twelfth. Materiality is... On Central Avenue in the south end of Louisville, Kentucky, lies the most iconic building in horse racing in the state of Kentucky as a whole. Built in 1875 and named after John and Henry Churchill, Churchill Downs began with these men simply leasing 80 acres of land to their nephew, Meriwether Lewis Clark Jr. He was the president of the Louisville Jockey Club and Driving Association at the time. Churchill Downs was built originally to fill the void left by the closing of two earlier horse racing courses in Louisville, Oakland and Woodlawn. It was built along the Louisville and Nashville Railroad to allow easier transportation of horses to the track. Clark began to run low on funds, however, and sold the track to William Applegate, who began to make major changes immediately. He shortened the track to the iconic mile and a fourth that it is today. He created the tr tradition of adorning the winner of the biggest race, the Derby, with the Garland of Roses. He added the $100,000 Twin Spires to the grandstands in 1895 before he turned operations over to the mayor of Louisville at the time, Charles F. Granger, in 1902. The leadership then, after Granger, shifted more towards business-oriented people because funds were not good and the track could not keep up financially. In the early 1950s, under the direction of Bill Coram, the track modernized with new barns, seating, and sprinkler systems, followed by aggressive construction, installing seating, and beginning the museum. A 
11th. It's a knockout is running in 12th. Materiality is 13th. Frosted is 14th. War Story is 15th by three. And then it's Fermento running third to last with Keen Ice. And the late running far right is the last of them all. Down the back stretch at Churchill Downs. The first half mile was just 47 at one fifth seconds of the long legged Dortmund. With five furlongs to go, pressed along by firing line. They're a half a length apart with just outside of a half mile to go. In 1984, President Stone resigned and was replaced by President Thomas H. Meeker, the youngest president since Meriwether Lewis Clark Jr., the original president, who was age 40. Meeker immediately began a five-year, $25 million re renovation project, which included paddock construction, clubhouse, and barn improvements and construction of the Matt Wynn Turf Course. In 2002 to 2003, Steve Sexton became president and began a two-step renovation process. Phase 1 provided over 60 luxury suites and the following year, Phase 2 expanded the turf club, installed more seating, and created a new grand entrance. In 2009, Kevin Flannery was named the 13th president of Churchill Downs Racetrack and also serves as senior vice president for Churchill Downs Incorporated. There is no doubt that Churchill Downs, the Derby, and the Derby Festival have a major effect on the city of Louisville and the economy of the city of Louisville. It brings in many jobs and a lot of money for the city and people everywhere. A break of two lengths back, American Pharaoh is three wide, racing third to the far turn run. Carpe Diem is running along in fourth. Danzig Moon is now fifth. Ocho, Ocho, Ocho putting in a bid, sixth and toward the inside. And then it's Bolo running in seventh. Mupta Hitch coming under pressure from eighth. Mr. Z, it's a knockout. Frosted is starting to warm up, but he's going very wide as the field rounds the far turn and firing lines in front. But American Pharaoh is looming up on the far outside, and Dortmund is digging down toward the rail, and these three are off the turn together. Dortmund cut the corner. American Pharaoh went wide and firing line is firing between those two heading to the final furlong of the Kentucky Derby. We're here with the uh, COO and president of Churchill Downs. He's going to ask him some questions about Churchill and Louisville and the effect they have on each other. Uh, do you think that Churchill has an effect on Louisville's economy as a whole? Yes, it certainly does. I mean, you take the biggest weekend in Louisville uh, the, the Derby Week, right? You know, and really, it's more the Derby Week. It's Derby Month because it starts three weeks out with um, the Thunder Over Louisville. You know, and then right. two weeks prior to that, with all of the Chow Wagons and Kentucky Derby Festival events, and and there's a huge camaraderie around the, around the um, around the state and in the city in particular uh, with all the activities that go along with that. So certainly. Churchill Downs has an effect on that. Not only that, we've we've gone through a lot of diversification, which has brought new jobs into the, in, into the region. And, and uh, three years ago, we had to move to a whole new building and off-site location because we had so many resources we could no longer house those people at the racetrack. American Pharaoh on the outside, firing line hanging tough from the back of the pack. It's frosted. Dortmund down toward the rail, 16th to go. And American Pharaoh and firing line, and it's American Pharaoh pulling away late. American Pharaoh rules the Derby. Firing line, Dortmund and Frosted were second, third, and fourth.